Previously, we talked about solving linear systems using substitution, and today we're going to look at solving linear systems using a different method called elimination. You might also hear this method called linear combination, but it's this exact same thing. So I'm going to start off by looking at a few equations with numbers in them. So I'm going to write a couple down. And... So, I'm going to ask you to look at the first equation. 3 plus 5 equals 8. Is that a true statement? Yes, it is. 7 plus 2 equals 9. Is that a true statement? Yep. Now, the third equation, 10 plus 7 equals 17. Is that true? Yep. Now, I want to look at that third equation a little bit. Where do you think that came from? Well, that came from combining those two other equations. 3 and 7 add together and get 10. 5 and 2 add together and get 7. 8 and 9 add together and get 17. This is linear combination, and we're going to use it to use that method called elimination. So let's see a different example with numbers. Let's do this 9 plus 7 equals 16. And 4 minus 7 equals negative 3. And 13 equals 13. Now again, I wanted to ask you, is this, are all of these true? Is 9 plus 7 equal to 16? Is 4 minus 7 equal to negative 3? And is 13 equal to 13? Well, let's duh the last one. The first two, they're also correct. And again, let's look at that third one. Where did the third one come from? It came from using linear combination, or adding these two together. 9 and 4 is 13. 7 and negative 7 is nothing, so it's 0. They went away. Canceled. 16 and negative 3 is 13. So this is the point of using elimination. What our goal is, is to eliminate a variable. And we did so using 7 and negative 7. So 7 and negative 7 are what we call opposites. We are going to be looking for opposites um, when we're using elimination for solving. So opposites are going to be the big deal here. Opposites. Um, opposites. 7, negative 7. Now let's think about opposites in terms of things with variables in them. So if I had 2x, what's the opposite of 2x? The opposite is negative 2x. So our goal today when solving with elimination is to be looking for opposites. If we don't have opposites, we're going to make opposites. But that's what we need in order to make things cancel out so that we can solve our system. So here's a system with some variables in it. Not before, nice little easy numbers. We have 2x plus 4 equals 10. And we have negative 2x minus 3y equals negative 8. If we want to solve using elimination, we need to have opposites. So the first thing I need you to do is look for opposites. Do you have any opposites lined up with each other? I see a couple opposites right now. I see 2 and negative 2 with the x's. So we can go ahead and we can solve this equation, or we can solve this system, by using linear combination, also known as elimination. We're going to just combine the two equations. 2x minus 2x is 0, they cancel out. 4y minus 3y is just 1y. 10 minus 8 is 2. So this was actually a really easy one. We don't even have to do anything else. We have the first half of our solution. We have y equals 2. So down in the bottom, I'm going to get my ordered pair set up, and I'm going to put the 2 right there. Now, if you recall from when we were solving... Um, systems using substitution, what did we have to do to get the other variable? We had to plug it back into one of the original equations. So we have two to choose from, and I'm going to choose the top one. Choosing the top one because there's no negatives, and to me, that's easier. So 2x plus 4y equals 10. Now the reason I left a space there for y was because I already know what y is. y is 2. So if we plug that in, we can go ahead and we can solve this equation. This is just 2x plus 8. All right. 
subtract 8 from both sides. So you get 2x equals 2. Divide both sides by 2, so x equals 1. So our final solution, we'll mix it up, all three colors, yay, is the point 1, 2. How do you know if your solution's right? Just like when we use substitution, you can plug these into the original equation to figure it out. So 2 times x plus 4 times y should equal 10. And negative 2 times x minus 3 times y should equal negative 8. So I'm going to substitute this one. I'm going to do this one with you just so you can see what it looks like. 1 was x, and there we go. And good thing I used two colors. 2 was y. So let's do the math. 2 times 1 is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. Is the first statement true? Yes. 2 times 1, negative 2. Negative 6 should equal negative 8. Yay, we did it. Our system is correct. The answer is well, point 1, 2. So we looked for opposites, and then we combined. Here's another system. It's already lined up for us in standard form. So we can go ahead and we can start by looking for opposites. I have x and I have 3x, and I have negative y and I have positive y. Are either of these sets opposites? Yep, the y's are opposites. Because I have opposites, I can go ahead and I can solve using elimination or linear combination. I can just combine the two. x and 3x is 4x. <coughs> negative y and positive y is nothing. On the other side, I get 5 and 11, which is 16. Now I have to do one more thing before I have x by itself. I need to divide both sides by 4, just a basic solving, and you get x equals 4. So that's the first half of our solution. I'm going to go ahead and write it in the corner. My ordered pair got it already ready to go. And then I need to find the other half of the ordered pair, which is the y. Now, again, you can choose which of the two original equations you want to use, but you have to go back to one of those. I'm going to choose to use the first one. I know it's got a negative in it, but it seems a little easier to me. So x minus y equals 5, and I know what x is. x is 4. So 4 minus y equals 5. I'm going to go ahead and solve this now. 4 is what I don't want, so I'm going to move the 4, subtract it from both sides. So we get negative y equals 1. Don't let yourself be fooled. You're not done. That's negative 1y, so we need to divide both sides by negative 1. We get y equals negative 1. We can put that in our ordered pair, and we have our solution. Remember, if you want to check it, which you should always do to make sure you didn't do a simple mistake, is you can plug it back into the original two equations to see if they remain true. All right, lined up. So this means it's probably an elimination problem. What we want to do is look for opposites. Negative 5x and 5x, those are opposites. What about negative 3y and 3y? Also opposites. Okay, let's see what happens when we have two sets of opposites. Negative 5x minus 5x is nothing. Negative 3y plus 3y is nothing. Okay, if you have nothing and nothing, what do you have on that side of the equal sign? Zero, because that's a symbol for nothing. Negative 7 plus 7 is zero. Now, when we were looking at substitution problems, we had a case where we had no variables. And remember, we called that a, I'm going to get my special case color out. It was a special case because it does not happen very often. And in this case we have the statement 0 equals 0. So this is the different kind than we saw in the substitution video, but you can still ask yourself a similar question. You can ask yourself, self, when does the number 0 equal the number 0? And the answer is all the time. 0 is always 0. So in this case, our special case, the answer is infinite solutions. What does this mean? This means no matter what values of x and y you pick, this system will, it will always work. It will always have solutions. 
So there are infinite solutions. This is a special case, remember. You're not going to see these all the time, but if you do end up with a number that equals the same thing, that's always true. So it is infinite solutions. <clears throat> all right, step one, look for opposites. X and X, not opposites. They're exactly the same. If I were to combine them, I would get two X's. Okay, moving on. Y and negative 2Y, are those exact opposites? No. Uh-oh. We don't have opposites, so nothing's going to cancel out. This is a case where we're going to have to work a little bit. We are going to have to make opposites. I have a positive X and a positive X, and I have a Y and a negative 2Y. I need to make opposites in one of those two equations by using multiplication. I'm going to look at the X's. I have x. What would the opposite of x be? The opposite of x is just negative x. Well, is there any way, what would you do to x to make it negative x? We have to multiply by negative 1. So you can choose to multiply one of the equations by negative 1 and then you will make opposites. Doesn't matter which equation you choose, I'm going to multiply this top one. And since it's an equation, I need to multiply everything by negative 1 to keep it all the same. So I get negative 1x minus 1y equals negative times a negative, positive 4. Now, I'm going to kind of ignore that one for now, and I'm going to focus on my new system. Here's my new system. I have x and negative x. I have negative 2y and negative y. Now I have opposites. I have x minus x opposites and they cancel out. They make zero. Negative 2y minus yet another y, I have negative 3y's, equals negative 16 plus 4, or with positive 4, is negative 12. Divide both sides by negative 3. Cancel. y equals negative over negative positive 4. So, I have one of my solutions. I'm going to go ahead and write it in the corner where it's supposed to go in the second spot where y is. And now I need to find x. We can find x by plugging it into one of the original equations or even our new equation. What I always do is look for the one that's the simplest. And to me, this old equation is the simplest. The old equation was x plus y equals negative 4. But I know that y is 4, so I'm going to say x plus 4 equals negative 4. Subtract 4 from both sides, so we get x by itself. We get x equals negative 8. So our final solution is the point negative 8, 4. We can check our solution by plugging it into the original two equations. So we've stepped up our game in our elimination uh, problems. Now we have to actually make opposites sometimes. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. So let's look at this new system. I have 2x and 2x. They're exactly the same, so they're not opposites. I have y and negative 5y. Not opposites either. So I need to make opposites. I'm going to look at those x's because they're the same. It should be pretty easy to make opposites. I have 2x and 2x. What do we need to change about one of those to make it opposite? We need to make it negative. That means I need to make one of the equations negative. It doesn't matter which one. Um, because I did the top one last time, I'm going to do the bottom one this time. I'm going to times the whole thing by negative 1. So I'm going to have negative 2x plus 5y equals negative 13. And I'm going to rewrite, because that one's gone now, I'm going to rewrite that one down here so I can see my system together. 2x plus y equals negative 5. Now we for sure have opposites, so I'm going to go ahead and combine these two equations so that I have something cancel out, something will eliminate. 5y plus another y is 6y's. Negative 13 minus 5 is negative 18. Divide both sides by 6, because we're solving for y. We get y equals negative 3. So I'm going to write that into my equation, where it, or my ordered pair, excuse me, where it's supposed to go. Now I need to find x. Now, I have 
a bunch of different equations up there. What am I going to choose to solve x? It doesn't matter. I'm going to choose to use one of the original two. I'm going to choose to use the top one because to me looks the easiest. 2x plus y equals negative 5. Doesn't matter which one you use. You can even use your new one if you want, but I like to use one of the original ones that way uh, usually those have less complicated parts to them. So I know y. I need to replace y. 2x plus y is negative 3 equals negative 5. So 2x plus the negative is just minus. Minus 3 equals negative 5. Solving says we need to add 3 to both sides. 2x equals uh, negative 5 plus 3, negative 2. Divide both sides by 2. And we get x equals negative 1. So our final solution is the point negative 1, negative 3. So this is another case where we needed to make opposites by multiplying one of the equations by negative 1. That way we had the opposites of 2x and negative 2x in this problem. Okay, last one to go. Elimination, because everything's lined up in standard form. We want to look for opposites. I see negative 2x and 4x. And I see negative 9 and positive 9. Do we have opposites? Yay! We actually do in this case, so we don't have to do any work. We can go ahead and combine these two equations. Negative 2x and positive 4x is positive 2x. Negative 9y and positive 9y is 0. They go away. Cancel. Equals negative 25 plus 23, which is negative 2. Now you have an easy equation to solve. Divide both sides by 2. You get x equals negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in my ordered pair. And we need to find y now. We need to find y by plugging it into one of the two original equations. Doesn't matter which one you want to use. See lots of negatives in the top one and not so many negatives in the second one. So I'm going to use the second one. 4x plus 9y equals 23. The variable we actually know is x, so where we see an x, we're going to replace it with the number that we know it is, negative 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, plus 9y equals 23. Now we're solving. I'm going to change colors because things are getting a little bit messy over there. Um, so we have that negative 4 there. We don't want it. We're solving for y. So we're going to add 4 to both sides. That way we get 9y equals 23 plus 4, which is 27. Divide both sides by 9, and we get our y value of 3. So our final solution is the point negative 1, 3. And we can always check it by plugging it back into the original system. So to recap, for solving systems using elimination, we can follow the following steps, or the given steps on this page. This is a page that, if I were you, I would take a screenshot of and save somewhere so that I have it while I'm working problems that are related to my project. So the first thing we need to do is get our equations in standard form all lined up. Usually that's already done for us. Um, then we need to look for opposites. And if we don't have them, we make them, usually by multiplying them by another number that's going to get us opposites. So remember when we had 2x and we had 2x, what did we need to do? We needed to make it negative 2x. Then you combine your two equations up and down so that you eliminate a variable. And you solve for the variable that's left over. Then you plug that value into one of the original equations, or the easiest one, and you solve for the remaining variable. And then you write your solution as an, oh no, typo ordered pair, so that's a x comma y, and you don't forget to check it to make sure you did it right. So that was solving the systems using elimination, and these were kind of the simple ones. There's going to be another video coming up soon that's going to show you some uh, more complicated solving with elimination problems.